Do your bass line sound something like this. But in reality, you want them to sound a lot more like this. Well, let me show you how. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio here from Noise. Welcome back to the channel. Maybe you haven't been here before, in which case, welcome to the channel. If you are a fan of the videos that I'm putting out weekly, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like, or if you can, head over to the website where you can purchase mixing, mastering, Ableton racks, sample packs, logic racks, and many, many more services designed to help take you from amateur to professional, or maybe you're just a professional looking for some extra tips and tricks. Any support from you helps me put out these videos on a weekly basis so I can bring you all the source. Bass lines can be boring, so I wanna show you how to make them a little bit more interesting with these really cool tips and tricks, which are actually quite easy. So what we're gonna do first is copy and paste this region onto a new channel just so we can listen back to where we started before. Now I made this bass line with silent and one of the things that makes it more interesting is by getting the velocity to affect the cutoff. So all you have to do is set it up over here on the right hand side, choose velocity and then choose cutoff A, B and then increase this dial to the right clockwise. What this enables us to do is increase or decrease the velocity and this will change how open or closed the filter is per note. Bear with me, okay, if you're not sure what I mean. So when the velocity is up and really high, the filter is really open, it has more high frequencies. When the velocity is down and really low, it has a lot less high frequencies. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go over to our MIDI. Let me change the velocity tool over here, which I already have up. If I hold command, now I have access to the velocity tool now. Now watch what happens when I click and drag up and down. So when I drag up, the filter opens, so we have a more raspy style sound. And when I close it, then we have a more kind of subdued sound like this. So immediately we can create a little bit of interest just by changing the velocity. So what we'll do is we'll make everything the same velocity. First, I'm holding Option and Shift here, and you can do the same in Ableton. It's all the same across all DAWs, all right? Let's take a listen now with the velocity quite low. Now, let's make some of them a little bit higher in velocity. So let's be kind of random. Maybe this one could come up, this one could actually come down a bit. And then we'll maybe make this one a bit louder this time. Maybe this one could actually come down. Now it's a really subtle change, but it definitely makes a difference from this. Which all sounds the same compared to this. So small changes, big difference. Now let's add some ghost notes as well. So I'm gonna put one here in the beginning, extend it a little bit. When I say ghost notes, what I actually means I wanna put some notes in, but we're gonna bring the velocity all the way down so it's the most subdued possible. So we almost don't hear this note. It's just like a little thing in the background that adds a bit of groove. Maybe it would do something. Something here again, bring it all the way down with the velocity, let's make it a bit shorter. And then maybe we'll do a double here. And bring that down as well. So you can hear by bringing the velocity down by closing that filter becomes like a little subby kind of note. Maybe let's extend this one here and increase the velocity a bit. Already way, way, way more interesting. We've barely done anything, okay? Let's listen to the original bass line. And the new bass line. So 
So a lot more movement, okay? A few more notes, more changes in dynamic by opening and closing the filter. Naturally, when that filter's a bit more open, when the velocity is a bit higher on a note, it also generates a tiny bit more volume. So there's this kind of push and pull to the rhythm. Now the bass line I actually ended up with sounds like this. So I did some other changes, and of course I'm just going with the flow here. I'm not trying to copy exactly what I did last time. So I threw in a few more ghost notes, as you can see this one on the end here, one up here, and this makes it a bit more groovy, a bit more of like a chunky style rhythm. Now a really easy thing that you can also do at this point is add a bit of swing. So you can either do this with the dial here, if you're in Ableton, you can add it from the groove pool, or of course, you can just move things manually, and that's usually the way I like to do things. So notes that are on the divisions are the ones I like to move, and the divisions are, if this is on beat, off beat, on beat. It's in between every off beat and on beat, okay? So on beat, division, off beat, division, on beat, division, off beat, division. We could also call it a 16th. So let's move the ones that are on the divisions. I'm gonna make them really late now, you know, just pushing it way too far and then we can bring it back because if we make the effect more obvious, then it's easier to hear and we can always pull back. If we make it too subtle, we might not hear the changes. Let's take a quick listen with this note shuffle, but I'm also going to include the kick so we have something that's on beat the whole time. So we can hear this one here is way, way, way too late. And also I think this note here can actually come off the grid, even though it's on beat, just ever so slightly and also be extended. Maybe this one too. So moving things slightly off grid to create a little bit of unpredictability. So far, we've done the velocity, which is affecting the filter. We've changed the length of the note. We've added some ghost notes and changed the velocity on those. And now what we're doing is shuffling, moving things out the way ever so slightly, creating imperfections, because when everything's quantized, it sounds kind of boring. Now there is one last thing I wanna show you, which I did at the very end of the eight bar phrase. Let me just highlight this. I often find that dropping the bass line out by putting a low cut on it, so not dropping it out entirely, but creating a thinner version can sound really, really good towards the end of phrases when you're just trying to bring the energy down for a hot second so you can bring it back into a new section of the song. Let me play it soloed and then I'll play it with the other instruments. Now, as you can hear there, not only have I cut out the low frequencies, but I've actually opened the filter in the process too. So I've done a little bit of automation. If I hit A for automation, we can see that I am automating the filter control cutoff, which is this dial here in silence, but pretty much every synthesizer has a cutoff or it should have a cutoff. So that's what I'm automating to get those high frequencies to come through. Let me play it to you with that. So you can hear all the subs being taken out and that's because of this EQ that's there. But with the automation, we can hear that filter opening up, which creates a little bit of tension. But of course, I didn't stop there. No, I was like, that's cool, but it could be cooler. So I've got the Valhalla Supermassive I chose the preset best ballad vocal, which I think I tweaked a little bit. And then what I'm doing here is I'm actually automating the mix dial. So not only is the filter opening up, I'm also adding some reverb towards the end of the tail to make it feel kind of spacey. If we open the automation, we can see it here and we can see that dial moving in Supermassive just here. One more time. Now what's cool about Supermassive is it's kind of a delay and a reverb, so it does a little bit of both at the same time, and it just makes things sound messy, even though it's for that small, small, small second, that creates so much tension in the track. So let me play it to you with everything at once. Wow. 
what it means is that when the baseline comes back in, all of a sudden, it's so tight. It feels like it's lost all its energy and that baseline feels like it's coming in much stronger. It isn't, it's coming in just as it was before, but because we've had that break, we've cut out the low frequencies, we've spaced it out with a bit of reverb and delay, all of a sudden it's way tighter. So let's have a listen to the whole eight bar loop and I'll show you what I mean. So let's take one more listen to where we were before and then what we ended up with. You can just hear immediately how powerful that effect is, how good it sounds, and the before and after, it's, it's night and day. It's amateur, professional. So, velocity filter, changing the velocity, which affects the filter, length of the note, a bit of shuffle, ghost notes, dropping the bass down onto a channel with a low cut, automating the filter, and automating the reverb. I know it seems like a lot of things, but these are all tiny little touches that make things sound so much more exciting for the listener, and of course, more groovy. If you're making dance music, you gotta make them dance. Before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you are a fan of the channel, please head over to the website where you can find something for you. Anything that you purchase from the website supports me in making these videos. So please head over there and find something that you like, something that's good for you. If not, sign up to the newsletter on the contact page where I am always sending out weekly discounts and offers. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure as always. And a big love from noise. Peace.